Okay, I've tried to make this video about five times already and it's just not working and it's way too hot and I've had no sleep and now it's Wednesday morning and this video is due out tonight. So let's just get this done. It's going to be rushed, it's going to be janky, but we are going to make it through together. I tried to make my own wedding dress. It was a massive fail and today I'm going to tell you all about it. Also, if you were wondering, we are downstairs today because the craft room gets direct sun first thing in the morning and no. No. So I think part of the reason I struggled to make this video is because wedding stuff took up my entire life for the first three months of this year. And how do you condense that down into a structure that makes sense? Despite my best efforts, the video kept turning into a kind of a 40 minute rant about social pressures and disorganized restaurants, which is not what you're here for. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you how I approached this project from beginning to end. I'll then point out all the ridiculous mistakes I made along the way so you can laugh at me, avoid them yourself, or possibly even both. There may end up being some slight ranting in there about social pressures and disorganized restaurants, but I guess we'll discover that together as we go. And then at the end, I'll reward you with some photos. Let's go. We got what I suppose you might call engaged on the 30th of December when he also romantically rolled over in bed one morning and said, should we just get married? I thought about it for a second and I said, yeah, why not? We didn't want to faff about though, so we got the registry office booked up immediately for the first day they had available, which just happened to be April 1st. Yes, we got married on April Fool's Day, and you might be surprised to hear that that is not one of the mistakes I'll be listing in this video. Unfortunately, that did leave us only three months to sort everything out, and while we did want something really small, I knew I would need to get a wriggle on and start making dress decisions really soon. I knew I didn't want anything super wedding-y because frankly, I just cannot be bothered with all that stuff. So I picked a pattern in early January, Vogue 1801, and went on a charity shop trawl for sheets. Making this mock-up taught me a lot about how to make adjustments, particularly short torso adjustments, because my waist is so outrageously high up that even a pattern with a raised waist like this needed modifications. Eventually though, I had a version that fit well and felt reassuringly comfortable to wear. And did I mention this pattern also has pockets? I made the longer version of the dress at first and tried it on with all of my various shoe contenders before chopping off to knee length and seeing which one I liked better. As far as I'm concerned, there is no outfit that can't be improved with the addition of some stompy black boots. With the length decided then, I turned to my next big decision, ordering the final fabric. We'll talk about this more at length during the mistakes section of the video, but basically I decided to try and use two layers of fabric instead of one and was having trouble figuring out what to use for either of them. But after much soul searching, I decided on a base satin and then decided to cover it up with a cheap net curtain dyed with tea bags. Yep, you heard me. This introduced what for now we'll just call construction concerns, as the dress is constructed in a non-standard way, especially in terms of the bodice. It took me a while, a lot of experimentation on scrap fabric and way too much theorizing to figure out how to adapt the instructions to work with my two layers. Ultimately though, I did figure it out and I was pretty proud of myself for doing so. When I tell you all of this in summary form, it kind of sounds fine, almost like things were going well. And in hindsight, it definitely could have been worse. But you have to understand, I was stressed. First, our plan to just have a quickie ceremony, then take our friends out for a nice meal had been almost entirely scuppered by a series of outlandish events that meant we really struggled to find a place that could seat 10 of us. Yeah. I barely believe this one myself. It was an absolute nightmare. I'd sort of successfully managed to figure out how to do some basic makeup, but hair was another thing entirely. Despite nearly three months of effort from the both of us at this point, it became clear that I basically have an unruly head full of brown cobweb and there's just nothing you can do with it. I did consider paying hundreds for a professional to do something with it, but to be honest, they've never been able to before, so I don't know why I thought this time would even be different. Because our three month timeline was at the very beginning of the year, I had to do all of my makeup practice in the approximately one hour of actual daylight that was managing to make it into the house. And this also made it really difficult to pick between two similar shades of fabric or tea dye something to the exact shade that I wanted. I just could not see what I was doing for like 99% of this project and it was so frustrating I can't even tell you. 
I turned down the option of an engagement ring, but Dev was trying to buy me some nice fancy wedding jewellery as an alternative. This somehow took about six weeks to sort out, and among other setbacks, involved us being scammed by a dodgy Etsy shop. On top of all of this, the registry office were being weirdly cagey about exactly what to expect on the day. We didn't even get a heads up on what vows we would be saying or anything ahead of time, and you know I do not deal well with uncertainty. So yeah, it had been a really high stress couple of months, and I found myself doing a try on of this in progress dress. It was still very much under construction, sleeve seams were inside out, sleeves and skirt hem were a mess, and also much longer than they would end up being, and I realised suddenly how itchy my elbows were. Yep, sometimes when I get really stressed, I get... Gross eczema elbows! And guess what dress design really leaves your elbows exposed at eye level for any, say, seated guests at an event where you may or may not be the centre of attention? Yeah. So I stood there looking at myself in the mirror, an absolute nervous wreck rapidly approaching what was no doubt going to be the most mortifying experience of her entire life. Thinking about how much work was still left to go to make this wearable, thinking about all the mistakes I'd made and the things I wished I'd done differently, and now thinking about how my body had up and betrayed me at the last minute. And I just thought, f*** this. So, how did we get here? Mistake one not enough planning. I don't think I can necessarily be blamed here because three months really isn't that long to pull everything together, but I did make a rash decision on that dress pattern without knowing what kind of fabric I'd be using or really thinking the whole thing through at all. When the plan changed to using two layers of fabric and I decided I wanted the lace layer to be a couple of inches longer than the base at the sleeves and the bottom of the hem, it became surprisingly complicated to adjust the construction. If I'd been more experienced, I'm sure I could have done a much better job of that, but really what I should have done is realise earlier on that I wanted to do this two-layer approach and then find a dress pattern that could easily be adapted, rather than, you know, picking the most awkward one I possibly could. Moral of the story, definitely give yourself more of a research phase. Mistake two was my fabric choices, just in general. <laughs> The make-your-own-wedding-dress world kind of assumes that you know a lot about fabrics, and suffice to say, I do not. The way I ended up choosing that base satin was by ordering just an obscene amount of fabric samples, taking a ton of reference photos to try and get around that lack of daylight issue, and yeah, even at one point making a spreadsheet where I ranked them on things like softness and how much I liked the colour, and then just let the spreadsheet decide for me. I still don't honestly know if this was an acceptable use for this fabric. I mean, it seemed to be working out okay, but I'm sure there were much more suitable things I should have been using. The net curtain as lace approach was obviously very questionable, but to be honest, I was really sick of fabric shops only selling floral laces and doing so for like 50 pounds a meter. There's just so much more variety in net curtains, and that's before we even get to how much cheaper they are yardage wise. Honestly, no apologies for that one. I think it was a good way to go. The actual curtains I ended up using, though, were perhaps not the best choice. They were a very cold, almost bluish white, and the best satin I'd picked was a nice warm ivory, so obviously those two clashed horribly. Which is why I ended up doing the tea dyeing. It took up two whole days, first experimenting with and then undertaking a serious round of tea dyeing in the bath. It definitely did look like a murder scene in there by the time I was done, and Dave was thoroughly grossed out, but I'm happy to report it washed off the bath easily enough. Still, it would have been real nice to just find some normal lace that was already the right colour, because while this did work, I also found that in certain lights the metallic threads could still read just a little bit blue. It just made it look slightly cheaper in some lights. Mistake three was honestly my biggest one. Letting the pressure get to me. I said right from the start of this project that the backup plan, if it didn't work out, was just to wear a cheap store-bought dress. There are plenty of lovely options for a white dress, and I didn't have super strong feelings about needing something fancy. We were doing the thing on the cheap in the registry office, we were only inviting eight friends, there was no reason to be stressed about it. Right? Well, you see. When I first started looking for dress inspiration, I found a lot of information on how to bride correctly. And yeah, I let it get to me. I found myself down a rabbit hole of which exact shades of white are acceptable to wear with which skin tones, which naturally begged the question, how the f do I know my skin tone? 
I was trying to learn makeup, but all of the tutorials basically applied an inch thick with a trowel and ended up looking like a completely different person. I tried, I swear I tried, to find photos and discussions from brides who didn't go for that impeccable glam look and just look like normal people. But I swear, it's like an internet-wide conspiracy to pretend that's not even an option. So yeah, I ended up way too worried about doing it wrong, about being the first bride in history with messy hair, etc, etc. And what had started off as a fun project to make myself a unique but fairly basic checky wedding dress to go with all of the other checky things that I wear on a regular basis, instead became, this isn't right. This isn't fancy enough. This isn't acceptable. I admit it wore me down to the point where sacking the whole thing off just ended up being a huge relief. And of course, mistake four, not asking for help. I tried to figure out the fabric choices and the construction dilemmas all on my own, which makes literally no sense since I'm lucky enough to know so many talented sewists. Why didn't I just ask them for their input? Honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe deep inside I thought that would be a failure? I don't know. Remember, I was not in a good headspace for this. <sighs> Still, you know what? Some things actually did go awesome and I'm really proud of them and I'm going to tell you about those things too. I learned about the technique called underlining, where you sew one fabric on top of another one all around the edges and then treat them as one layer from that point on. Hooray for new skills! I matched up the pattern so well on both sides, which was not trivial with the satin involved and this weird delicate mesh, let me tell you. I needed a sleeveless lining for the inside of the bodice because it was a bit too see-through, so I learned how to draft one. First by following a tutorial for a basic bodice piece with my custom measurements, and then by making a sort of hybrid between that and the dress bodice to get the neckline and the shoulder slope right. It fit first time! I replaced the facing called for in the pattern with that inner bodice instead, did a load of finicky hand stitching, and the neckline lay right. I put an invisible zipper in on two layers of fray prone fabric and didn't even mangle anything. Then I learned how to enclose the zipper tip inside the lining. How swanky is that? Plus we made our own flowers too, which is an argument for teaching your other half to crochet if ever I've heard one. This was a fun bonding experience and now I can keep them forever. So okay, you've sat through this tale of war and I expect it hasn't been the most coherent, but sometimes life just doesn't lend itself to a neat narrative, okay? Once I decided to give up on the dress, I honestly just felt a huge weight off my shoulders. I tried on a few Amazon dresses because we have no shops around here and they have good returns, found one that actually really reminded me of the only floral lace I'd seen and liked, and just went with it. Yep, I got married in a £28 Amazon dress. And you know what? It went fine. They didn't turn me away from the registry office for having slightly frizzy hair that held its curl for all of about five minutes. Complete strangers actually cheered us in the street despite me clearly not having pockets. And yes, in some of the photos I do think it makes me look a bit wider than I would have liked, but that's what I look like, so I might as well just get used to it. The whole thing was exactly as mortifying as expected, but at least it was mercifully brief and then we could go do the fun confetti part. Those crochet flowers worked out brilliantly. I put the slightly wonky one Dave made right in the front of my bouquet and I proudly showed it off to anyone who would listen all day. After the ceremony and the celebratory Greg's trip, I quickly got changed into those stompy boots and spent the rest of the day wandering around places in a wedding dress, big black boots and my trusty green wool coat. So the dress project was a fail. But among all the lessons about different fabrics, about how to attach linings, all the various kinds of adjustment and even some custom drafting skills I learned, the main thing it did was keep me occupied. I mean, yes, as we've discussed, I was stressed, but that was mostly because of the external stuff. In my craft room, it was just me and the dress, I had to focus so I couldn't actively worry about anything else at the same time, and I knew deep down in my heart, if I failed to get it done in time, it just didn't really matter. And that, for me, is what crafting is all about. It's an enjoyable process that, yes, hopefully results in something usable. But if it doesn't, you still had that enjoyable process and you probably learned some lessons along the way. Will I develop my sewing skills, finish off this dress one day and wear it for our one year anniversary? Honestly, maybe. I tried it on again yesterday and now that I've had some distance from the whole thing, I can see that it's definitely salvageable. But also maybe not. Maybe I'll rip it to shreds, recover all that fancy satin and make myself some absurdly posh pyjamas. I don't know. 
But one thing I do know is I'll definitely be making another version of this dress soon in a much more sensible fabric because just look at that happy face. So that's the wedding video, hopefully. And also my last wedding related task. I look forward to moving on with my life. I'll also be back soon with some more crafty nonsense. So in the meantime, have a brilliant rest of your day and keep making cool stuff. Bye!